girlfriend cheated emotionally. So for the beginning, I, male, was together with female for approximately two years. There were some fights between us pretty often, but albeit all these, we loved each other. Almost two months ago, I asked her to give me some time for reconsidering my life and our relationship. We almost never texted or talked during the first three weeks of this break. Once, she asked me if I can pass by one to two times for one week at her house to check on it because she was gone out of town at her parents. So she gave me her house key back to me for the time being. After that, we continued talking occasionally and sometimes between the words were sneaked a I miss you or I hope to see you again soon from both me and her. Last week, she texted me, I'm seeing a friend tonight, just so you know. I called her and asked her politely if there's any possibilities that her and that guy would have intentions for something or even hook up to let me know not to keep in touch with her anymore, to let her go and stop talking with her, reminding her in the same time that I want to get closer to her again. She said no, she has zero intentions with that guy in any way. Later that evening, I texted her saying that I might reconsider things since she's meeting this guy and won't bother her again. But something pushed me forward. I was feeling something is off. She rejected my call. I hopped into the car and in 20 minutes I knocked at her door. I guess I wanted to see them with my eyes. I felt she was lying to me. I knocked two times. Third time unlocked the door. They were half naked in the bedroom preparing to have sex. I left. Next day I met her again to give her the key and she said crying that she's sorry I didn't deserve it. She doesn't explain herself how she ended up in this situation and that they never ended up having sex. She knew I was pursuing her before that night to get back together but decided to get intimate with that dude. She kept texting me that she's sorry, that she's sad we couldn't be happy together, blah blah. I don't believe that they didn't have sex, obviously. Let's say they did. I remember you. We were not officially back together then. Would you forgive her and go back with her? I still love her, but I'm confused. Also, what hurts me more is that very same day I asked her true intentions with him and she said no way she has. But four hours later, here they were half naked like something's planned. Would you forgive her and get back together? Edit post. I wanted to thank you everybody separately for your point of view. I didn't look necessarily for exclusive validation. I just wanted a different perspective. I do admit my share of mistakes, which probably led to this situation, but I also don't forget hers. The best thing to do is close it up for good and take advantage of this experience to learn how to be a better me for another her in the future. Also, since I got downvoted so much, I bet if it was the other way around, she's catching me lying about my intentions with a woman and catching me in the act, you would have called disrespect, dishonesty, unloyalty, and selfishness. But it's okay. Women are always the victims, no matter what. Our first response is from Doofy Lubucheron. So, if I understand correctly, you've been together for two years. You each have your own house, but despite that, you decided to take a break. It's all over, just from there. I win 313 has the next thought. OP, I read your story and other comments, and let me just say this. You were in the wrong. On so many levels. She did what was best for her and not sit there and be emotionally drained and wondering what the F it is that you want. Saying she hopes to see you soon and misses you shows she still possibly wanted something with you, but evidently you didn't. She had a choice, to wait for however long or move on. So she did what most adults would do. She made a choice. Her choice didn't sit well for you, so your ego is hurt. Boo hoo. It sucks. It was a long two year relationship, but you opened that door as soon as you wanted a break and now you're looking for validation for your actions? Nah, man. If someone came to my house unannounced, even with a key, I would take that as an invasion of my privacy. Get over yourself. Get some therapy for this and move on and let her be, dude. Next thought from... Kerhane? You told her you need space and only when she was seeing another guy did you decide you might want to start things up again? Seems pretty unfair for her to wait on you to decide when you want to take her back. Doubt she had any intention to do anything, but as a single girl, she had no obligation not to follow up on anything that date progressed toward. And then, your jealousy got the best of you, and you went to her place unannounced to catch her in the act. Doesn't seem like cheating, and doesn't seem like she did anything wrong. Think you should have made it clear you wanted to be with her and don't go on the date with the friend. Instead, you dangled the possibility of a future relationship, and she didn't find that overly compelling. Next up from Tiny Dinosaur 1894 I mean, I'm gonna be downvoted, but she wasn't doing anything wrong. At that point, you wanted space. She gave it to you. You can't have your space with her in a bubble tied to it. And even in a relationship, people are allowed to hang out with other people. You texted her, you were reconsidering getting back with her because you wanted to hang out with a friend, didn't get a response or reaction, then went over there without warning. When my ex told me we were done, if I walked out the door, 
I was going to help my suicidal ex and was open and honest about where I was going and who I was going to see, he screamed at me for about 20 minutes before telling me that, and I walked out the door. He still claims that I cheated on him by hanging out with my ex despite breaking up with me before I even got into my car. It's not cheating, she was going by what you said. Don't say things you don't mean, then get mad when people listen. One more comment before moving on. Just Wow 52 says, So wait, you said you needed space, so y'all were on a break that you asked for. Then she gave you a key to her home in case of an emergency while she was out of town. Then you used it to enter her place of residence when she didn't answer your knocks, knowing that she was seeing a friend? People don't have to answer their phones or their door. It's not cool to ignore their obvious wishes and force your presence upon them. You asked for space and then invaded hers. Doesn't anybody else think that's kind of creepy? On to the next story. Friend's husband told another girl, also my friend, he has feelings for her. Do I tell her? Long backstory. Thank you in advance for reading. One of my close friends since kindergarten recently got out of a long relationship and doesn't have a lot of friends in the city besides me. We both moved here for grad school. I'm going to call her Emma, 24 female. I just met Cassie, 25 female, this past year and a half because she is in my med school class. Cassie has been married to Enrique, it says 26 female, but it was a typo, should be 26 male, for four years. They both moved to the city for Cassie's med school and Enrique doesn't have a lot of friends in the city. Cassie and I have never hung out one-on-one, -on -one, but are in the same group chat and have gone out downtown or to each other's houses on weekends, only in group settings. I love Cassie and admire her so much. There have been occasions where she has brought up problems with her and her husband, Enrique. I didn't think much of it at the time. When I hung out with them together, they seemed very fun and basically like the perfect couple. I invited Emma to go to a Halloween party at Cassie and Enrique's house with me because she broke up with her boyfriend that week and didn't have plans anymore. Emma and Enrique seemed to click well and got each other's numbers to go skiing together. Cassie is very busy with school and doesn't have a ski season pass like Enrique does, so Enrique was looking for people to go skiing with. Emma tells me later that she texted Enrique to go mountain biking with her. Then they went skiing together twice. She was telling me they text all the time and were friends. This was all starting to feel very weird to me, especially because Emma was recently single and has been going on dates nonstop since her breakup, at least three to five dates per week, constantly seeking attention from males. For reference, when she broke up with the boyfriend she was dating for three years, she went on a date with a new guy that night and the next two days in a row. It was weird to me how she never tried to be Cassie's friend too. Like if she was really just texting and hanging out with Enrique to have another friend, why wasn't she trying to get to know Cassie too? Last week, Emma and I were chatting about her dating life. She brought up Enrique and how things got weird between them a month ago. Here is her side of the story. She said they were texting every day and how their texts started to feel more flirty. Enrique told her about his marriage problems with Cassie and how he thinks they got married too young and has to wake up and choose to love her every day because it isn't easy anymore and feels like they don't have sex enough but he can't leave her because she's in med school and very stressed right now. He's also just really unhappy in the city and how he moved here with Cassie. He told Emma that he was starting to develop feelings for her and how when she came over to his apartment after skiing to hang out, just the two of them, Cassie was gone, that he thought they might hook up and have sex. Emma told me she was surprised to hear this from him and how she then told him they were just friends. He asked Emma what they should do now and Emma said they should probably stop hanging out one-on-one -on -one and only hang out in groups. All of this messaging was text or Snapchat, so much of it disappeared. Enrique asked Emma not to tell anyone about this. Emma told me about this about two months after it happened and told me not to tell Cassie or anyone else about this. I was super shocked to hear all this. My view of Enrique really changed since this felt so slimy of him. I'm not feeling good about this and wish Emma had not told me. I was feeling like I should tell Cassie, but I couldn't muster up the courage since it felt like I was betraying Emma and it would be so uncomfortable to bring up Cassie and I have never hung out one on one. The next time I saw Cassie, it was a girls night at her place this past weekend. She brought up that lately things with her and Enrique have been a lot better. They have been having sex more and getting along well, but she was concerned for his mental health and feeling like he doesn't have many close friends in the city, but overall their marriage is doing better than last fall. If I were Cassie, I think I would want to know, but I read some reddit threads saying most people would not want you to meddle or bring this up. I wish I could tell my med school roommate since she knows Cassie and Enrique too and she might know what to do, but I feel like I can't tell anyone and don't want to burden her with this like Emma did to me. Our first response comes from J and H daughter. Honestly, Emma should not have been texting a married man that way that they were. That's not cool at all. What I don't get is when men and women do things with other people, but they for damn sure knew if someone was doing this with their person, they wouldn't think it was cool. 
Why can't people live by do unto others as you would want done unto you? She should be the one to tell Cassie to be quite honest, and she should take responsibility for her part in it. If she doesn't, that just shows her character and what kind of person she is. Also, you have to think Cassie might be one of those types of people that, because they think they love a-holes, they don't respect them. They will get mad at the messenger. I'd really evaluate your relationship with these people and if they are all worth being your friends. They seem messy. I mean, if you like drama, cool. I don't judge. Next thought from a deleted account. First, I'd say Emma was probably the problem with her relationship. This affair probably went further than you know. She most likely only told you the parts that didn't cross the line to ease her guilt. It's been two months and you've been silent. Maybe bring this topic up with Emma and see how things are between the two of them now. Record it in case something is confessed to. Moving on to the next story. Ghosted, my cheating boyfriend. So I've, 24 female, been dating my boyfriend now, ex, 27 male, exclusively for about six months now. He seemed to be acting more distant lately, so my gut told me to go through his Apple Watch while he was in the shower. This was my first time ever snooping and the only time I felt the need to. I found multiple disgusting messages of him flirting with other girls and some messages of him trying to get these girls to come over a while I was away on vacation. One of the girls he was talking to even was saying she was busy because she had girlfriend duties that day. That disgusted me the most, knowing that he was trying to cheat on me with a girl that he knew had a boyfriend. So basically, after I saw the messages, I was infuriated and was going to barge into the shower. However, he was taking mad long in the shower, and during that time, I just decided I didn't care to hear any of his excuses, and I came with a plan just to take my crap, the PS5 I got him, and just block him on everything the next morning. This is all just so insane to me because he tried so hard to show me off to his friends recently and treated me so well on Valentine's Day. I truly don't understand, man. One of his friends even reached out and told me he denied cheating allegations and told them that he had no idea why I left him. Did I do the right thing by just ghosting him? Should I have confronted him instead? First response from Valacona. Thank God you took the PS5. The next thought comes from 00 Juice 00. I know his butt was hurt when he came out to a missing PS5. DOP responds, laughing out loud. He came home to a missing PS5 and no girlfriend. Late for dinner thinks, huh, tell his friend that reached out to you that maybe the side piece is done with her girlfriend duties and can come help him figure out why you left. Nero Aldrin 20 closes us out. He is missing the PS5 more than you. You did the right thing. 